So let's go back to the book of Revelation. And I want you in chapter 5, we're going to get a running start through it. And I hope actually chart the things that, that are priceless in heaven. They might be worthless on earth, but they're priceless in heaven. That's where I, I want to get. And that's what I hope your communion offering of worship to the Lord is. That you say, if that's what you love, that's what I want to give. If this is what pleases you, that's what I want to do. Okay, just, just so you know where we're headed. Okay, Revelation 5. Because we're looking through the eyes of the prophets and the apostles, and we see heaven through their eyes. John, Daniel, Ezekiel, these other people we're looking at, actually were there. We have a flawless picture. Revelation 5 is the first one, starting in verse 11. Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne. Heaven, by the way, is only silent at times. It appears to be uh, just a cacophony of, of sounds. And here's one of those sounds. The voice of many angels around the throne. So it's just, every time I say this, I think of when I venture in to my beehive out back. You know, we have a few thousand bees living in there, and I wear my little suit and puff my little smoke thing at them, you know. I act like I know what I'm doing, and I get my tool, and I open that top, and I take it off, and all of a sudden, you instantly hear the sound. They know something's happening. And it goes from not hearing anything to... It's just getting louder and louder, and they all start moving, and of course they do their thing, you know, and I... with smoke at them. But that's what I think about, just this, this constant angels, these, these countless angels around the throne, and you can hear their voices. Verse 11, and the living creatures, and we already know what they say from last Sunday, they're crying out loudly, holy, the, the trisagion, holy, holy, holy. It says that they're crying that out. They're kind of up here. They're above the throne and circling around, and then around the throne, down on the kind of the floor or ground level, are all these angels and the elders, And the number of them, that's the angels, was hundreds of millions and millions of millions. And they're saying with a loud voice, us, the 24 elders, which speaks as representative of the priesthood that believers of all ages have to Christ, and the creatures, these living creatures, and the angels, all of us in unison are saying this 12th verse, which we sing often, worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Isn't that amazing to know what we're going to be saying? Those angels capture our attention, those countless white-robed angels standing like living walls of pure white robes, rising, reflecting the light of God. They rise and fall to the sounds of these four creatures as they crisscross the expanse of the four corners of the throne. They move as one. The angels are falling down on their faces with the 24 elders as together they speak the wonders of the glory of God. Now, slip down to actually back to chapter 4, verse 5 of Revelation because the second attention riveting part of heaven is not just these countless angels, but what's going on in front of us because it says in verse 5 and from the throne proceeded lightnings thunderings and voices so here's if, if you can think about it hundreds of millions the sounds of the voices of hundreds of millions of angels and these holy holy up here but out of the throne itself see what it says from the throne God's throne are proceeding lightnings And Ezekiel says it looks like the lightning is actually, you can see through the throne, it looks like it's inside radiating, kind of like, that's why I love Oklahoma thunderstorms. You get a good one where the lightning's going that way instead of this way, and it's in a cloud. Those are the really neat ones where it's kind of muted a little bit, and it's, you can see it going out like that. That's the description that Ezekiel and Daniel and here John have of what's going on inside this throne. It's just lightning and thunderings. So there's this this huge reverberating sound and voices. That's, That's interesting. I don't know what that is, but it's there. 
And seven lamps of fire, verse 5, were burning before the throne. So I just imagine geysers or something, you know, just pillars of fire. There's seven of them. So it's like a throne and seven fire things, flames like this, are right in front of it, which are, it says, the seven spirits of God. And and it it appears that these could be, because they're alluded to in other places, the seven that Luke talks about, angels that always face God. There seems to be this group of angels that always face God. Maybe that's talking about the seraphim and the cherubim. I don't know, but all I know is that they're burning like flames, these seven spirits of God. Look at verse 6. Before the throne with all the lightning going out and the thunders and the, and the voices, there's a sea of glass like crystal. And in the midst of the throne and around the throne, those four living creatures, full of eyes, front and back. Can you imagine a creature that's just covered with eyes that's not a monster in a science fiction movie, but is a creature utterly devoted to worship to God? And... These, verse 7, the first was like a lion, which parallels Christ, king of the Jews, which parallels the gospel by Matthew. The second living creature was like a calf, which parallels Jesus Christ, the suffering servant, which parallels the whole gospel of Mark, which, by the way, all these are in the Old Testament, prefiguring the coming perfect one. And the third creature had the face of a man, which parallels, by the way, they're even in the right order, because that parallels the gospel by Luke, which presents Christ as the perfect man for the Greeks who wanted a perfect man. So this creature, they had the face of a man. And the fourth creature was like a flying eagle. Isn't it interesting that these creatures are mentioned in the same order as Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and the same representative image that were on the standards of the I mean, we could go into this. All the tribes of Israel gathered around these four creatures' faces, too. They organized Israel that way. They were in the the tabernacle, and now they're around the throne. I mean, this is important to God. Like a flying eagle, which is a picture of Christ as divine, which is the whole theme of the gospel by John. And, verse 8, the four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around and within. That's an interesting thought. Around and within eyes. And they do not rest night or day saying, holy, 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 Lord God almighty, who was and is and is to come. And whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. You know, people always say, what are we going to be doing in heaven? Sounds like we got a full schedule already. I mean, you're listening, and as soon as you hear the the cherubim screaming out from the the sky, the expanse around the throne, holy, 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 you fall, and I fall, and we fall on our faces before him. To think that we can offer worship to God. But now comes what we need to get ready for. Look what these angels do at the end of verse 10 and cast their crowns before the throne. Because of this, every time the, the creatures speak, they cast their, their crowns, it appears to be that you get to get them back, and then you cast them, and you get to get them back, and you get to cast them. It's kind of like an eternal memorial that you keep getting to offer to the Lord. Do you ever think about that? Not one time. It's not like saying... Well, I was really busy in my career and school and my life and my everything else, and so I only got to do this, but there you go. That's over with. There seems to be an eternal casting going on here because it says every time the creatures say the trisagion, the holy, 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 the 24 fall in their faces and cast the crowns. It's an interesting thought. If that's how it is, then it's really important what we do while we're here on earth because it's what we're going to be giving as our offering forever. That's why it's very sobering to think only one life will soon be passed and only what's done for Christ will last. Remember who said that? C.T. Studd on his deathbed. And his next line was, I'm sorry that I, 
that, that I, this is all I have to give, and he gave his entire life. I mean, he was so into this, he wanted to have longer to give more of his life to the Lord. Okay, and they say, as they cast the crowns, verse 11, you are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. If you're one that likes to study stuff, they alternate between the sevenfold, that's chapter 5, where these lamb is slain to receive power and riches and wisdom, strength, honor, and glory and blessing. That's seven different elements, and this one only has three. You're worthy to receive glory, honor, and power. And then they talk about you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. But as you back up, your eyes go from, from looking at these angels and then looking at this floor and all the flames and all this casting going on to looking at the throne itself. And I, I want you to see in chapter 7 of Daniel, where we were last time, but I just want to remind you of it, back up to Daniel 7 and verse 9, because I want you to see the throne again. I want you to see the magnificence of, of the setting that all this is going on. Daniel 7 and verses 9 and 10. Because central to heaven is the throne of God. And central to the book of Revelation is this throne that's completely encircled by this rainbow that's over and around and beneath it that, that John talked about. And we're overwhelmed by the massive rumble of power and the endless peals of thunder and the flashes of lightning that radiate outward from within. And as we're listening to all that, something else is going on. There's a waterfall. There's a river of fire. It says in Daniel chapter 7, look at verse 9, I watched till thrones were put in place. By the way, thrones. See, these things are not looking at something in the future. He actually was seeing it happen. That's something that is very boggling. He didn't see a representation of the future. Each of these prophets actually saw the future. They saw it happening. And so when Daniel picks up, the thrones were being rolled into place for these 24 elders. The thrones, not the throne. God's throne's all set up, it's there. The thrones were coming. And the thrones were put in place. And the Ancient of Days was seated. His garment was white as snow. The hair of his head was pure wool. That's Revelation 1, describing how Christ looks right now. Remember, God is a spirit. God doesn't have a robe. God the Father. As W.A. Criswell of Dallas so succinctly said when he preached through this, he said, the only God you'll ever see is Jesus Christ. You understand that? You're not going to see three people walking around up there. And you say, now which which God are you? You It's one God in three persons. Two of them are represented by the dove because they're invisible spirits. The exact Hebrews 1, 3 representation of God that you and I will see is Jesus Christ. He is the exact representation. He is the God that you will see. And that's who's on this throne. And it's who's wearing the robe and has the white hair. But keep looking at this. His throne was a fiery flame. Remember I just told you about the lightning coming out and it says it looks like a gemstone. The whole thing looks like, like, like a gemstone, but it's got lightning, but it's also on fire. And there seems to be something moving on it. Its wheels, whatever that is, are burning fire and a fiery stream issued and came forth from before the throne. So there seems to be like a fountain and a river of fire flowing outward from this throne. And no one seems to be alarmed because fire only burns away impurities and there's nothing impure in heaven. And so there's this marvelous scene of this river of glowing fire coming out from before the throne and a thousand thousands ministered to him and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. Didn't we just read that in Revelation? It's the same thing. Same place, same event. While you're in Daniel, back up to Isaiah 6, because I want to show you one more element before we get into what will matter there. Isaiah chapter 6. Because this is interesting. I I love how the scriptures don't just leave us up there in na-na land, you know, thinking about all the thunder and lightning and voices and all that. It always comes down home to what should we do about it? What's the correct response to all this? Okay, here's, here's one of them, because these creatures that are around God are called the burning ones. You ever heard of a seraph or a seraphim? 
that word in Hebrew means burning one. So there are these burning ones. They seem to be like they're on fire. And that's what Isaiah saw in Isaiah 6, in verse 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne. (laughs) Same throne, here we are, back. There it is. High and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphim, the burning ones. Each had six wings. They could be similar to the cherubim. Maybe it's another word for it. Maybe they're different. Maybe the cherubs with all the eyes are on fire too. There, you know, there could be lots of orders of angels, much more than we know about. We just know the things that are revealed are what God wants us to know. We can think about it, but it doesn't matter whether it's different or the same or whatever. But these also had six wings. With two, they covered their face. With two, they covered their feet. And with two, he flew. And one cried to another and said, Sounds like we're playing the same tape again, doesn't it? We're back in Revelation. Look what it says. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. By the way, this is what Ezekiel saw. This is what Isaiah saw. And 600 years later, that's what John saw. And they're hearing the same words. They're seeing the same throne. They're seeing the same fire and creatures. And they're describing the future. But they were there, which is unbelievable. Only God can do that. And they said... Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the doors were shaken by the voice of him who cried out. And the house was filled with smoke. And I said, here's the result. Woe is me, for I am undone. I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. Why did he get all like that? Because my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. So, The more he saw of God, the more he saw his sinfulness. And that caused him to cry out and not want to be that way. He wanted to be pleasing to God. And so the Lord heard the prayer of his heart. And look what happens. It says, And then one of these burning ones flew to me, having in his hand a live coal, which he had taken with tongs from the altar, and he touched my mouth with it. And he said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away. Your sin is purged. Wow. 